mail bag time again. I'm gonna have some more packages coming. I had some other stuff on as well, so this isn't all of it. There's gonna be more. So make sure you stick around. There'll be some more stuff going on. You also have to excuse the mess of my desk here because I've got some batteries and computer stuff here which I'm working on. I'm fixing these right now. I'm also working on these. A couple of mine things. This one needs a new battery. I don't know if I'll do video on those. I'm doing video on these, but I'm not doing video on that, I don't think. We'll see where we go. We'll find out if you see a video, won't you? Got the first package, which is completely covered in tape, so I'm going to have to use a real knife. It's very disappointing. Oh, right, okay. I'm trying to think, what, what did I buy Maxter of? Alright, so this is Maxter Thermal Compound. No the reason I got this is because the thermal compound I've got is quite old. Although, actually, it doesn't feel like I bought it that long ago. And I've still got loads of it left. Now, I was actually looking at this. This is Electroloop stuff. And it says used by July 21. And I'm actually not sure that the thermal properties in this are good enough for using on computers. Now, I have been using it on computers. But I'm actually thinking maybe I should buy some better stuff, which is what I've done. And hopefully this is actually better stuff. Sometimes you just don't quite know, do you? Maxter CTG10. There's the specs on this. Um, 14.5 watt per millikelvin, or what is that? Is that right? I guess it is millikelvin. I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know what the MK means. I'm not a computer nerd, believe it or not. Breakdown voltage and operating temperature. Let's have a look at this. This could be important as well. And there's the rest of the specs. So, up to 280 degrees C. So, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> if you're getting up that high, something's seriously wrong. This stuff wasn't cheap. I was thinking that my previous stuff probably isn't suitable for doing CPUs. I mean, I have used it on CPUs and stuff like that before. And it hasn't shown any signs of being a problem. So, this Electroloop, where did I get that from? I don't remember actually where I got it from. This is the specs on it. EHTC35SL, apparently. If you know whether this thing is actually any good or not, let me know. I mean, I purchased it for doing things like putting power transistors on heat sinks and things like that, and you know, voltage regulators and those kinds of things, right? That's what I got this for originally. I wasn't really thinking about computers for that. And that's why I also got so much of it. <laughs> it's going to last me another 10 years at this rate. Let me know if that is suitable or not, really. 14.5, is it real? I don't know. Probably is. They looked like there was a whole bunch of fake ones on AliExpress, so be careful. This one appeared to be legitimate, maybe good ratings and stuff, so... I've got this because I've got a MacBook Pro behind me here, which I've put that electrode paste on, and it's getting hot. And I think it's only barely managing anyway, normally. And because uh, it's just one of these computers I repaired and I rebuilt it, and so I, that thermal paste is what I had. And so I want to put this on it and see if it helps get that temperature down. I expect it probably will. It can be important, I suppose. You have to make sure you're proper the calling. I'm just not sure that Electrolube's doing a job on computers. I don't think it is. Next package. And here's some more thermal paste. This is not two or one. I've got two different types. It's the NTHT 10 gram version. Not to us, so I thought, well, it's probably a trusted one, isn't it? Usage time up, up to five years, and I use, oh yeah, okay. Um, I don't think it actually said what its thermal characteristics were, which is, I thought was quite interesting. I don't know if it's on there somewhere. Don't know, might have to translate it. Yeah, I thought I'd get that one too. So I've got two different thermal paste. I don't know. Give me feedback. If you know what these perform like, put it down below in the comments. Let me know. I don't have a clue. Okay, so there's a 5.3 gigahertz spectrum analyzer. I think this was a review item. I don't remember. Well, <laughs> I've had such a hectic few weeks. I've just been so busy. Anyway, um, more busy than normal for me. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a. So I've already got a proper spectrum analyzer and stuff up here on the on the bench here. VNA. Got a signal one. So I think this was a review item because I wouldn't have purchased it. I don't think, but. Then it does this 5.3 gigahertz thing, so maybe I would have done, I don't know. I don't honestly remember. Turn it on, did your battery power? Yes, it's booting up. Default, there we go. It went to 3 gigahertz and it jumped up to 5 gigahertz, that's interesting. You can see the scan rate across here, at full bandwidth. It's not too bad. But it's a nice case. Yeah, wow, my memory's completely gone. That's incredible. Yeah. 
So if this is a review item, then watch out for me doing a review on this very soon. I'm not sure when I've got the time to do it, but I'm going to have to find a time. <laughs> Ah, right, battery, excellent. I need this battery for this Retina MacBook Pro we're sitting here. I picked this up recently with a few others, which I did a mailbag, yeah, I think the last mailbag video I showed those. I was quickly going through them all, just checking them out. And that one had a bad battery, it had spicy pillows going on, which I showed in that video. And it needed a new battery, so I've taken the battery out, that's been disposed of, and here's a replacement battery right here to go into it. At the moment you can still get the things. Now, as you know, I like to have a spare. Now I did have a spare battery, but I ended up using it. So I don't actually have a spare battery anymore. I'm thinking I should probably get another one. You always need a spare, all right? But with batteries, you don't want to get them too soon. Because the last thing you want to do is have a battery sitting around for years unused. So you kind of want to get it late, but not so late that you end up not having a computer because you haven't got a battery for it. Anyway, computer stuff basically. So we've got thermal paste, new battery, and you've got a spectrum analyzer, which I need to review, I think. I really wish I could remember. That's the problem. Companies will approach me and say, hey, would you like to get our product? And that's fine. And often I'll say no. 90% of the time, I'm not interested. Probably more than that, actually. 95% of the time, I'll, I'll say, no thanks, I'm not interested in that product. Or just ignore them, you know, because it's potentially a bit of a dodgy link and stuff like that. You get all sorts of scammy stuff coming through you as well. As a YouTuber, you get all kinds of emails, you know, which could potentially be people trying to hack your YouTube account. You get a lot of that too. So you have to be really careful as a YouTuber doing that sort of stuff. Just don't randomly click on things when you get an email. Don't think, oh, they're being genuine. Well, actually, no. If the email address doesn't look right for a start, just delete it. Don't even open anything. Don't read it. Just delete the damn thing. Because if it's a company, they'll have a company email address. YouTube tip of the day. There'll be more stuff probably before or after this. I don't know. I'm waffling. I'll probably edit all this rubbish out. I don't know. Well, I'll stick it on the end. <sighs> what am I doing in my life? I'm sitting in the room by myself, talking to myself to try and make videos for people for almost no money. <laughs>